Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I wanted to bring you the update on Samantha Humphrey. So a couple of things have developed in her case. Can't say that they are good, um, but they are updates. And so I want to make sure that I touch on them with you. Uh, this first one here is in regards to a car that had been found in the Mohawk River. And they are stating that they do not believe that it's connected to her. And so um, it states that a submerged car pulled out of the Mohawk River on Wednesday <clears throat> evening is not believed to be tied to the case of missing 14-year-old Schenectady girl, Samantha Humphrey, according to the city police. The car was discovered by New York State Police dive teams near Riverside Park at approximately 8 p.m. on January 11th as they scoured the river in search of the Schenectady teenager who went missing in the area on November 25th. Sergeant Patrick Irwin, a spokesperson for Schenectady Police Department, said that the vehicle appears to be unrelated to Humphrey's case. The vehicle has been there for years, if not decades, Irwin said. He said the department is currently processing the vehicle. While it does not appear to be related to the Humphrey case, it is still being investigated, he said. Trooper O'Neill said that since state Police dive teams began assisting Schenectady police with the search on November 28th. Their squads have launched several missions on 16 days over the last seven weeks in the ongoing case. Quote, it's based on the request of Schenectady police as they're the lead agency in the investigation, O'Neill said about the dive missions. O'Neill said that the state police dive teams can still search the river during the winter months. Quote, there are some weather limitations, but our team is trained in cold weather, which I'll say right there is unbelievable because it is so cold. It's so, so cold. Uh, she said, so they're prepared for a majority of that, but there are some circumstances like use of sonar that are determined by weather. If there are sediments in the river and there's a high current, there are situations like that which would metaphorically and literally muddy the waters. And there are certain technologies we wouldn't be able to utilize because of those kind of conditions. In the weeks since her disappearance, the search efforts has utilized state police helicopter and dive teams that scoured the river in a four mile area from the Stockade neighborhood in Schenectady to the Rexford Bridge. Wow. I mean, that's quite a distance. But I'm starting to get concerned that they might have to go further. I don't. They've they've been working really really hard though. Um, and then the next thing is pretty upsetting. It's pretty upsetting. Uh, so they were testing her jacket to see if it in fact was her jacket. Her mother said it was for sure. Um, if you remember the black jacket and it had what appeared to be blood on it. And so the results have come back and it came back to matching three different sets of DNA. And so one of them is hers. Another one is really concerning. And the third one is unidentified at this point. So... I will uh, play this for you and um, let you hear what they have to say. On that jacket have come back with the presence of three sets of DNA and one of those sets belongs to Samantha. Police say Samantha Humphrey was last seen on security cameras around midnight on November 25th, approaching the area of the Front Street Pool and a railroad bridge that crosses the Mohawk River but police say there are no images of her ever leaving the area. Schenectady police say on the night the teen went missing, Samantha texted a friend, telling them she planned on meeting up with her 14-year-old ex-boyfriend when she didn't return home. Her father searched the area, discovering this jacket along the shoreline, which family members told News 10 they believe belongs to Samantha. During a press conference four weeks ago, I asked Schenectady Police Chief Eric Clifford if any images showed Samantha wearing the jacket. At this time, we're just not able to, to, to determine whether the photographs and or video match what was found. However, sources with intimate knowledge of this case tell News 10 that test results from the jacket 
have found the presence of three sets of DNA. One set is said to be a match to Samantha, another set matching an adult male who's been identified as a local convicted felon. The third set is said to belong to an unidentified male. We just would like to be able to find out what happened to Sam, our Sammy. I spoke with Samantha's grandfather, John Matarazzo, over the phone regarding this latest information. Well, if anybody knows anything or saw her with any of these people, I mean, whoever they think they could be, they got to help out. They have to help out because there's, there's questions that need answers and somebody knows. I reached out to Schenectady PD asking them for any updates or comment on these recent results. They would only say that if the public has any information, they're asked to please give them a call. In Schenectady, Anya Tucker, News 10, ABC. Yeah, so they're definitely keeping this close, right? Um, they're keeping it close to the News vest, 10. which is good for the investigation. Um, however, the Samantha's mother is getting very, very frustrated, and it, like most parents do in this situation. And um, I myself am really concerned about why there was DNA on her jacket that belonged to a local convicted felon. Don't know what they are convicted of, right? I don't know, but concerning nonetheless, it's an adult male that's a convicted felon and why would his dna be on a 14 year old's jacket that's really really concerning uh so i believe all of that basically just restated everything that, that they said um but i'm not sure that she gave the number so uh in regards to if you have any information that might um help with the case their tip line is 518-788-6566. And it said that the New York State Police and their dive team had returned to the icy waters of Mohawk countless times in their effort for the search uh, for the teen, but have unfortunately had no luck finding any evidence of the girl. Well, the jacket, I guess, would say is evidence, but that was found in the beginning. Right, so... And I had seen a post on Twitter where somebody saying that, like, her mother has to know more than she's saying. And, well, I thought that she said that she left her phone at home. I did not hear that um, from the get-go. I have heard that the cell phone was found on the bank. They found her jacket. And then a little ways from there, right, they ended up finding her cell phone. And so I don't. I'm not sure what the person on Twitter is talking about, but I don't really like when people are accusing family members, uh, especially like her mom, like why, whoa, no. And so speaking of her mother, um, this article is, and there's some video about her, the mother grieving, and she states that she is at her wit's end. Um, it talks about the nightmare has been overbearing and constant ever since her 14-year-old daughter, Samantha, disappeared the day after Thanksgiving. Quote, I'm very frustrated, I'm angry, and I'm at my wit's end, she said. Misery in recent days has been exasperated, exasperated, I can't say it, I know I can't, after receiving a news release written on Schenectady Police letterhead containing information about DNA retrieved from Samantha's jacket found near the Mohawk River the day that after she had disappeared. The information had not previously been released to or reported by local media and then also wasn't talked about by the police. So, I mean, I could see like that's got to be again. Wow. It's so hard how some of these families find out this information on their loved one. They find out online. But um, I'm going to play this first video and then I do know that there is a second video that um, follows it. Humphrey investigation. This connected a teenager was last seen nearly seven weeks ago. Authorities have been searching a miles long stretch of the Mohawk River for the young girl ever since. Dan Levy joins us with the new information. And Dan, it's important to point out that you've had this information for several days, but you've purposely not reported it until today. Yeah, that's true, Sabrina. There has been information, both accurate and inaccurate, circulating about this case that actually has produced a few red flags. After carefully vetting the information, I'm comfortable tonight to report 
What's going on? The intensity, the police search for Samantha Humphrey and the determination to find her might not match the level of grief, anger and frustration that Samantha's mother has felt over the last 40 days and continuing. Parameters of where they're Jacqueline Humphrey's nightmare has been overbearing and constant ever since her 14 year old daughter Samantha disappeared the day after Thanksgiving. I'm very frustrated, I'm angry, and I'm I don't know, I'm at my wit's end basically. In recent days, Jacqueline's misery has been exacerbated after receiving a news release written on Schenectady Police letterhead containing information about DNA retrieved from Samantha's jacket found near the Mohawk River the day after she disappeared, not previously released or reported by the media. It has different information. We did not know that there was an adult male that had been identified that is a convicted felon and apparently was taken in by the police department and questioned. Police tell me that news release was unauthorized and they cannot comment on specific details because of their ongoing investigation. Our vetting of the document revealed an immediate red flag. The public safety commissioner named at the top, Wayne Bennett, died six years ago. The unauthorized news release also mentioned for the first time, detectives now consider the Samantha Humphrey case a death investigation. I am led to believe as I have believed from the beginning that my daughter is seen going into the river. There is footage of her going into the river and for whatever reason, that they're not telling us police acknowledge there is information they're unable to share with the family or the public not wanting to jeopardize their investigation Jacqueline says she understands it but she doesn't like it I'm not getting answers I'm getting a lot of inconsistency a lot of inconsistencies with the police department and it's making me feel very unstable as a parent as a, and as a person in, in general and tonight, Jacqueline tells me she does have plenty of questions she'd like to ask police, and you will hear what those questions are, and you will hear a police response coming up new at 5 o'clock. So that's really concerning. Uh, huh. Yeah, to know that um, this commissioner right here that you could see, he had passed away six years ago. That's um, kind of strange. And what is going on there? Was there a mistake? I don't get it, right? How does this letterhead come from Schenectady Police Department saying that there's a news release, yet the police did not authorize that? And so, yeah, what is she to believe? I don't even know, right? Is this accurate information that was released and uh, prematurely? <sighs> So it's awful when this kind of stuff happens. Like, ah, uh, no wonder. No wonder she's feeling the way that she is. And I feel really awful because she said unstable um, as a person, as a mother and as a person. And what that tells me is it, her mental health is really not doing well. So I'm, I'm very concerned for her. Um, I'll play you guys this uh, video here. new information regarding the search for Samantha Humphrey, a missing Schenectady teen. On Live at 4, you heard from Samantha's mom, Jacqueline. She says she's angry, she's frustrated over not being kept in the loop regarding information gathered by police. Here at 5, Dan Levy spoke with her about the questions that she still wants answers for. Dan's live here in the studio with what he has found. Dan. Elaine and Rachel, good evening. Jacqueline Humphrey told me today she's at wit's end worried about her daughter now nearly seven weeks after 14 year old samantha disappeared tonight jacqueline is pleading with police to tell her what they know about the case jacqueline humphrey believes schenectady detectives know a lot more about her daughter samantha's disappearance than they're letting on and she's right but on the other hand the last thing police want to do is say something that could jeopardize their investigation I do not think that putting certain information out there could hinder it.
Sometime last week, Jacqueline received a news release on Schenectady Police letterhead outlining information not previously revealed publicly. At the top of the letter was the name Wayne Bennett, a former commissioner who died six years ago. Police say the letter was unauthorized and they were unable to confirm its contents, citing their ongoing investigation. And I have had a lot of conversations with people who have been in the same situation as me who have had missing children or children that were murdered and they're telling me they got a lot more answers from their police department that i'm getting what jacqueline isn't getting is confirmation that police are now treating her daughter's case as a death investigation nor are they confirming what she has read and heard in the social media rumor mill that some of the dna evidence found on samantha's jacket was from a convicted felon it's all that's on my mind constantly probably coming up with theories that i shouldn't be coming up with including right now right now she has myriad questions for police did you get the ex-boyfriend's dna did you look at his bite marks and determine whether they were bite marks and whose bite marks those were and if they were my daughter's bite marks where exactly did you find her phone well citing their ongoing investigation police tell me they are unable to confirm any of those uh, questions or information at this time. And Jacqueline, by the way, tells me that police have acquired DNA samples from family members and they've been given permission to obtain Samantha's dental records. So she had some great questions. She really did. And the police never did state that themselves really want to talk about the phone, but it was, um, reported that it was supposedly found on the bank. And so for her to want to know that information, I could totally see why. And I think that those are, those are my first thoughts right from the beginning of this. And you find out about the bite marks was, did they do a comparison with her dental records to see if it matched the bite that he had? And yeah, I know he's, I know he's only 14, but did you get his DNA? Is that who the third person is, but you just didn't take the DNA? Um, I, I could see why she had these questions. And I unfortunately, I know she said she talked to a, a families that are in similar situations and they got more answers, but they don't all. We've covered a lot of cases with people not getting answers and being really frustrated. And it does depend on the department very much so. And also the type of what they're doing, right? If it's a search it alone, sometimes you get a little more answers than opposed to a death investigation. Then they start to be a lot more closed lipped on the whole thing. But yeah, so that was the update on her that I wanted to make sure I brought to you guys. Um, it is not, it's not good for the outcome. Uh, it doesn't seem good. It hasn't. And um, I just ask that you, you pray for her mother, pray for Samantha, but definitely please, please pray for her mom for peace in her heart as much as she can find, um, because she truly needs it right now. And, uh, I will continue to update you on any other information that comes out in her case. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Take care. I love you all till next time. Bye.